the oil and gas industry and farming have been working side by side for more than 80 years and it's a great mix of industries because what we, ha we harvest from the top, as in our pastures, the oil and gas industry are harvesting what's beneath the ground and it returns financially, it returns a, a lot of wealth to our province. So initially when they do the seismic surveys, uh, the firm that's contracted to go and um, visit all the farmers, they'll have send a permitting officer in or a perhaps a liaison person. Um, they will individually um, talk to all the farming people, all the people that are connected within that particular area. When they first came, it was very personal because the American company that was here, they were here, like the chief executive from America was here sitting at our kitchen table explaining exactly what they were trying to do. Once the project starts ahead, you'll have this, the survey people will come through. Um, it'll be all um, mapped out, pegged out. You'll have the crew come through that will drill the holes where the shots are going to go in. You'll have the next crew come in which will let those shots in so the readings will be taken. And then you'll have the restoration crew come through. We're um, involved here with the Mangahewa oil field, um, oil and gas field. It's up here on, our, on the back of end of our property up here. We've been here for eight years and we have um, had a real good close working relationship with Tide Energy in that period of time. Very, very good on consultation to keep you informed on what's happening. When it comes to perhaps a rig being put on your property, um, it depends whether they're actually going to come back to that site later as to how far they restore that particular site because if they're coming back they don't really want to take a lot of that base metal away so that'll probably just be fenced off but the rest will be restored. They've always done a good job on restoring restoration of any earthworks that are done that are outside their normal area of operations. They'll normally, they'll, and without exception, they've always fully restored that back to you know, where it was before, if not better, in fact, most cases better. The only way that we directly as, as a farmer would benefit would be the compensation that the company pays when they come through. And so you, usually there will be uh, two forms of negotiation. One, when they come and do an exploration hole, because that would only be there for a small amount of time. But if they wish to um, stay and go further, investigate further, well then they'd renegotiate for a longer period of time. They have a very transparent model for um, payment to, in our case, dairy farmers, and it's based on an average production of 1,000 kilograms a hectare at milk, milk payout, and that's um, fair, clean, transparent, above board, and we think that's a fair and reasonable payment for their minimal impact on our operations. Traffic movements around the property, probably on a normal day, five or six light vehicles. Some days when they're re-drilling or working on the wells, we could have hundreds of traffic movements. But they, they seem no problem. They always open and shut gates. They maintain the tracks. I'd suggest it's a moderate impact. It's, we have a lot of traffic that comes up and down, but it doesn't actually have much influence on the actual day-to-day -day operations of the farm. It's about opening and closing gates if they're open or closed, and then just get, they, they move through, do their, do their stuff, and then move on out again. So no, it, it's no major problem for us. For us, farming just carried on as normal. You just had a few people walking around your property, so we didn't have any problems whatsoever. They're only too happy to try and help you out or they're always asking if there's anything wrong or anything upsetting you. I'd suggest that the energy industry across the board is probably far more responsible with, the, with land than even us as landowners often are or, or are perceived to be at times. But the, the smallest little incident will go through a whole procedure of why did it happen, what can we do to make sure it never ever happens again and I'm talking about small things. Taranaki Regional Council their guiding document they have to abide by is the RMA. So that is land, water and air. And um, so as dairy farmers, we are monitored by the uh, regional council rigorously and so are the oil and gas industry. Uh, they have a lot of experience with um, oil and gas naturally because they've been here for a long period of time. A farmer approached by an oil company, I oh, don't know, just go through the pros and cons with them and probably ring up other people that have got the same situation as they have and just get their views and I, w I would encourage it and it's good for employment, it's good for the area, it's good for everybody. I think their relationship generally with farmers, which is where most of their drilling is done, generally across the board has been productive from, from their side and from the farmer's side because as I say, if you give a little bit they give a little bit as well too and it's not just about money, it's about a whole range of aspects and they do things in the community which most people wouldn't even be aware of, you know, just helping out at local schools and 
um, being part of the, trying to be part of the community as well too. And, and they, they, they know they're here, they're long-term partners in the, in the district and so they want to be part of the scenery long-term as well too. The important part and why it works so well in Taranaki is sitting around the table and discussing the issues and working it out. They've been here for over 10 years and we wouldn't even notice that they're here, it's just part of our life and there's no problem at all. 